Hi everyone, welcome to a Next Tech Extension Ed talk. We're at the K-State Research Center in Hayes talking about making and using compost today. My name is Pallas Messer. I'm the horticulture extension agent in the Golden Prairie District and I'm here with my friend Cassie. My name is Cassie Homan. I'm the horticulture agent in the Post Rock District. So to get started, let's just talk about what composting is. It's a natural process that combines organic uh, materials plus soil, and it turns into what we like to call a living organism because there's all kinds of microorganisms that live inside and help break down all of the materials. So when you want to get started with composting, you're gonna need some type of container, and it can be pretty simple. It can be wooden pallets, um, you can use cement blocks. It can um, even be a plastic container that you're using. There's also more elaborate systems. You can buy your own composting bin from a lot of garden catalogs or garden centers, um, or it can just be whatever you have around your home. So if you have chicken wire, you can make a bin um, around a chicken wire or just an open, open pile concept. So you can be very creative with your bin um, and just use what you have around your home. All right. Then we're gonna talk a little bit about the different types of materials you can add to your compost. So we like to separate it into two different categories, our browns and our greens. So our browns are high in carbon and that's what all those little microorganisms like to feed on. And browns include most dry vegetation. So our dried leaves or grass clippings, also straw or um, wood chips or limbs or twigs. And then our greens, uh, in, that's what's providing our nitrogen into the pile. And also some of our moisture content, which is very important. Uh, that includes more fresh things like freshly cut grass, um, maybe some uh, plants that you wanna discard. Um, also our kitchen scraps, any vegetables or um, fruit or coffee grounds, things like that. Manure also counts, but make sure you're not using pet droppings. It's more of those grass-fed livestock type animals. And if you're really wanting to boost things and get things started, you can also add some uh, commercial type fertilizer. But make sure you're avoiding adding any meats, fats, oils, anything that's been cooked in butter or covered in salad dressing, you don't wanna add that. Um, and then you should be good to go. Okay, so we're going to talk about the six rules of rotting, so kind of what is happening in that pile and how it's breaking down. So some of those rules are the mass, the particle size of what you're adding, the carbon to nitrogen ratio, moisture, oxygen, and then how long it's going to take to break down. So the first is mass, and basically what we're talking about is the size of the pile. So what you want is about a three cubic feet pile, and that's just because that's the perfect size. It's gonna heat up really well. If it's any smaller than that, it won't heat up, and if it's any larger than that, you're gonna have a lot of work on your hands, um, and it's just too hard to maintain. So a lot of times we'll have a three segment bin, so there'll be a place for holding materials, one will be the composting process, and then the last bin will be finished compost that will be ready to add to your garden. Then particle size is very important to keep in mind. So uh, in comparison, if you add an entire newspaper that you just got off your porch, that's gonna take a while to break down in comparison to if you rip it up into some smaller pieces that will break down more quickly. Same with things like a limb or if you go ahead and chip it, the chips will break down more quickly than the limb. <laughs> then also we're gonna be talking about carbon and nitrogen ratio. So again, those browns and greens, the browns are our carbon and the greens are the nitrogen. You want to think of this in a three to one ratio. So you want three parts brown to one part green. And then also keep in mind that you do wanna go ahead and add some soil, um, but in small increments. So every 10 parts of total compost, one part of soil would be helpful to go ahead and add in. Okay, another really important tip is to add some moisture. So if we have a really dry season, especially in July and August, if it's not raining, you need to add some water to your pile. Um, compost should be made up of about 50% water. You want to keep the materials really moist but not wet. So when you're touching your pile, you want it to feel like a damp sponge. Um, not really soggy, not wet, but just damp. Oxygen is another thing that's really important to think of. So you can either have an aerobic or anaerobic pile. So if it's aerobic, it means there's plenty of oxygen. It's a healthy pile that uh, there's that oxygen is available for all the microorganisms to access. 
but if it's anaerobic, you're probably gonna be able to tell because it's gonna smell uh, and it's not gonna be very active. So the way to solve that problem is to go ahead and go in and rotate it um, to add some airspace. And then you could also add larger particles uh, to increase the area inside of the pile. When you're thinking about how long your compost might take, it's going to depend on if you have a very active or hot compost versus a colder compost pile. So for hot compost, you want the temperature to be about 130 to 160 degrees, um, and this will be able to be stored for longer periods of time. So hot compost piles are really great. They're also going to destroy any seeds you put in, so if you're adding weeds to your pile, you want it to be a hot compost. Um, the only downfall is they just need a little bit more maintenance, so you will have to come out and turn them a little bit more often, um, but it's going to give you a really great um, result in the end. For um, cold compost, the temperature should be about 120 to 140 degrees, and they're just a little bit easier. It's less work. Um, if you want to have worms in your compost bin, you want to do a cold compost, um, and it just takes a little bit longer for those materials to break down about 8, um, eight to 12 months for a cold compost. When you're ready to use your compost, you can use it all over your lawn and also in your garden. If you wanna use it around your trees or shrubs, just go ahead and use it like a mulch, spreading an even layer around, uh, probably just a couple inches deep. Also, if you wanna use it in your garden, you can incorporate it into the uh, topsoil. Go ahead and work it in either with a rake or a tiller. Um, you can also broadcast it around your lawn in the grass, um, but this you want to make sure you're doing it in a very small amount, around an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch because you don't want to bury that grass. Um, and one other tip that's really helpful, you can apply compost at any time of year, but if you apply it in the fall, it has time to sit over the winter and have a really fresh, nutrient-rich soil to work with in the spring. Okay. So if you are having some troubles with your compost, here are some tips. Um, if it's not producing properly, you might need to add water. That's probably the main thing that's happening. If it's dry on the edges or in the middle, just add some water and you'll likely see a better result. Um, it also might have low levels of nitrogen, so you might need to add more greens. If you don't have any greens around your home or in your garden, you can always add that commercial fertilizer like Palace talked about. Um, if it has a smell, you can add some more browns like straw or um, leaves. That'll help to um, reduce the odor and also to turn the pile. Um, if the temperature is not high enough, you need more nitrogen, so add in some greens. And then if you find pests around your compost pile, if you have skunks or raccoons getting into your pile, you can try to fence it in or turn the pile um, or add things into the middle of the pile instead of the edges. So for a finished product, you're looking for something that's a really deep, dark, rich color that um, has a nice, light, fluffy texture and has that good, earthy smell. But something to remember is composting is never finished. Uh, all the particles that you added in aren't going to magically decompose at the exact same rate. So um, just know that it's an ever going process and you'll know you have compost when you can't recognize the individual materials any longer. And just to kind of wrap things up before we uh, talk with some of our master gardeners about a cool project that they have going on behind us, we just wanted to talk about a few resources. Yeah, so if you want to learn how to become a great composter, we have some awesome publications available at any of your local extension offices. There's ones on how to start a compost bin, how to use your compost, troubleshooting compost bins. Um, so if you have any questions, you can find those at your local extension office. Seems like the world is always changing. And like the weather in Kansas, change is inevitable. Mobile technology improves the lives of everyone, not just those living in a city. Next Tech Wireless is right there with you, providing expanded LTE coverage for everything from phones to farm equipment. We are devoted to help Kansas work smarter and live better. Next Tech Wireless, time for something different. 
Rogers and Associates Insurance, we serve the Midwest. We offer home, auto, commercial, and farm insurance policies and provide solid options for life and health insurance. For those unexpected life events like hail, wind, deer crashes, fender benders, and the little things in between, we can help you ensure what matters most in your life. Let us help you design a plan that meets your needs and budget. Visit us online or call us at 1-800-569-0118 to learn more. Welcome back. We're at the K-State Research Center here in Hayes with some of the Cottonwood District Master Gardeners. Mary Lou's here with me right now. They're, she's going to tell us a little bit about their backyard garden that they've started just in the last year. Is that right? It's This is the third year third for our year. backyard garden. All right. We started it in the fall of 2016. Uh, Early 2017, uh, we put up the fence and built the compost bins and really started gardening in earnest. Awesome. Yeah, tell, go ahead, show us a little bit what you have growing right now. Maybe tell us a little bit about how the compost bins work back here behind us. Okay. Uh, this spring, we have our spring garden in. We have onions, kale, spinach. Um, radishes, carrots, beets, and lettuce, along with our uh, perennial um, asparagus and rhubarb. The asparagus and rhubarb, this is the third year for that. Okay. Um, last year our asparagus did a whole lot better than this year. We haven't figured out why, whether it's the weather. We're going to blame the weather this spring. <laughs> um, but plans are when it dries out, we'll put in our summer garden with green beans and cucumbers and squash, maybe a tomato plant or two. Okay. So a typical garden that a, a homeowner would raise in their backyard. We intentionally kept it small. It's um, 12 by 24. But with the gate and the compost bins, we have a planting area of about 12 by 20, so about 240, 250 square feet is all. Yeah. Uh, we do most of our tillage and everything with hand tools. We have a little electric rototiller that turns the top part, but we do most of our tillage with hand tools. Um, we got a grant from the Hanson Community Foundation that got us started with the money we needed to mm -hmm. build our garden. Um, the compost bins are basically free. Uh, we source them through a, a, a garage sale and then from businesses. So they were basically free. Uh, we did choose pallets of the same size for the outside perimeter. Okay. The inside walls, we didn't have enough of the same size, so they're just a little bit shorter. But uh, we put a perimeter of cinder blocks underneath to help preserve the uh, pallets. We didn't want the pallets sitting on the ground. That makes so, sense. So we bought a few cinder blocks. The pallets were basically free. They are wired and screwed together. Okay. Um, our plans are still to make a front gate of some kind on them. Uh, we're thinking of a frame with uh, hardware cloth okay. to make actually strainers. I like that idea. So we just haven't gotten together and got that all figured out mm -hmm. yet. So, but that's our plan. Uh, if that doesn't work, we're going to, we've got more pallets that we're going to use the slats and just Slide make a slat okay. gate. Neat. Uh, so this is the third year for our compost bin. Um, initially, we were what we called lazy composters. <laughs> and did not turn it much the first year. Okay. Uh, we did put all of our garden excess in there. Um, some of the tomato and pepper vines went in there. Some of the flowers from here at the research center went in there. Okay. At the end of the year, you know, both bins were pretty much full. So they, we just let them rot down. 
Uh, yeah, tell us a little bit about the different sections. Why do you have three different sections? We have three different sections. Um, one is kind of for the raw materials okay. to let it compost and, and rot down. The second one is to help turn it. When, when you turn it, you want to kind of sift it and take the big pieces that aren't completely rotted mm -hmm. and put them in the other bin. And ideally, the third bin then is for finished compost. Okay. To this point, we haven't generated a lot of finished compost, so we're using the third bin as storage for our mulch. Yeah. But, uh, so <laughs> the third bin right now is straw mulch that we will use in the garden later this summer. Okay, neat, I like it. Um, were you able to build the, did it, how many people did it take to build the bins? Um, I think there were around a half a dozen of us okay. worked on the bins. It took us two sessions. Okay. I wouldn't say it's two full days because mm -hmm. it wasn't full days. A few hours each session. Um, it took us two days to build the fence. Uh, that was the next spring. We, we did the compost bins in the fall of 2016. Uh, so they went up, that was the first thing that went in mm -hmm. was the compost bins. And um, the next spring we built the fence and uh, we had our grant monies in place. And so uh, in 2017 is when we really built the garden. Okay. And uh, now we're just kind of maintaining it and growing and yeah. enjoying the produce. And Yeah. Awesome, thanks for showing us around. It looks really nice, it's a neat project and hopefully some people in the area will come out and check it out. That's so. what it's here for, is for people to come and see what they can actually do in their backyard. Right, that yeah. That's what it is to demonstrate is what can be done in your own, in your back own backyard. And, yeah. I like that. Yeah, thank you, Mary Lou. You're we'll welcome. We'll be back in just a little bit with uh, one more segment to learn a little bit more about composting. Don't let the weather outside interfere with the comfort of your home. Contact AquaShield Roofing and Construction today for all your home repairs, no matter what the season. AquaShield Roofing and Construction specializes in roofing, siding, guttering, insulation, windows, doors, remodeling, and construction. We offer free estimates, and our customer satisfaction is our priority. Don't put off repairs due to the season. Call AquaShield Roofing and Construction today. Welcome back. Today we are learning about composting and we're here with some Cottonwood District Master Gardeners, Pat and Joanne. So we're at their backyard gardens and they have some awesome compost bins here. Um, so Pat, what are you going to add to the compost bins today? Well, uh, I brought this morning coffee grounds okay. and the papers, the filters yeah. okay. from my uh, daily coffee. <laughs> and uh, I had a a honeydew sitting on my countertop, so I cut it open and I thought I'd bring the rinds and the seeds along. Okay, so some kitchen scraps that you use? Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that where you get most of the things for the compost? Well, it is, and from the backyard garden here, okay. um, I've been uh, tending it this spring, and we have radishes planted, so the radish tops um, end up in the, in the compost bins, mm -hmm. and the rhubarb, uh, the rhubarb leaves, so the rhubarb has been fantastic this year. So we've had a lot of, of uh, the, that type of thing in, in the compost bins. Okay, awesome. Um, how often do you turn your compost bins? Well, we turn them about every three weeks when we have the rainy weather that we've been having mm -hmm. and it's nice and moist. Uh, you need to turn it quite often. But if it's dry and um, things aren't moving along as fast, you have a slow compost and it, you only move it 
maybe every six months with you would turn it. Okay. Okay. So you, and you want it to get really hot in the middle, and that's kind of why we're working on turning it right now. Yes. Yeah. The the wetter it is, the more it cooks, and that inside will reach a good temperature to to cook the um, uh, debris that's put in there. Right. Okay. Because you do put some weed seeds and other kinds of seeds in the compost. Yes, um, it should get hot enough to kill those weed seed or cook them, and uh, it shouldn't be able to uh, be viable anymore to grow. So, right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, what are some other things you found that you can put into the compost? Well, uh, you can put in grass clippings, okay. uh, newspaper. Uh, any kind of kitchen scraps as long as there's no dairy products, no meat products, and uh, no pet droppings. <laughs> so mm -hmm. just uh, any, any weeds in your garden or just any uh, greens and browns is what they call uh, the layering that you put in the compost pile. Okay. Have you ever had any problems in this backyard garden with any pests or any thing getting in and going through the compost? We haven't had any problem, which is surprising because out here at the research center, there are a lot of uh, <laughs> raccoons that bother our produce that we're growing. Uh, but no, we haven't had any trouble at all with anything getting in it this year. Okay, that's good. Mm -hmm. Good. So if um, somebody does have pests getting into their compost, would it should they just kind of bury things that might be smelling or build a fence around it? Well, I think a fence would help. Yeah. Um, just what you put in it. Uh, if you don't add any meat scraps or dairy products, that really deters the animals from wanting to get in it anyway. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, so where do you, when your compost is finished and it's looking good, where are some places you use that? Well, we've used it on our garden. Uh, this spring, we turned our pile and at the bottom was a really nice layer of compost. So we put it all over where we're growing our plants. And uh, we had a nice layer to add. Okay. So. Does that really help the garden, have you noticed? It does. Uh, any kind of organic matter will really help things grow. Mm -hmm. So less yeah. fertilizer use maybe if you can use more organic matter. That's true, yes. Yeah. Okay. Would you have any tips for new gardeners that maybe want to try out composting? Well, I would just say um, if you have a really dry summer, the, the more water you add, uh, the better off you are because that does make it heat up and cook faster. Otherwise, it just kind of sits there. Uh, turning it can be kind of a chore. It's a little heavy and it, it's just something that you don't really feel like doing. But the more you turn it, the, the better it cooks and the better compost you'll get out of it and the quicker you'll get it. Yeah. So. Okay, so maybe it's nicer to keep the bins a little smaller. That way, when you're turning it, it's a little easier. Yes. Yeah. Um, these are the perfect size. They're, it's really a nice design, especially when you have the three bins and you have one that you can move uh, the debris to, you know, and turn right. it. It's a lot easier than if you'd have to scrape it all out and put it all back in one bin. Right. So. Okay. Well, should we go ahead and add some to our compost bin? You want to do that, Pat? Okay. So you're going to add it to this raw material side? Well, I think what we'll do, we'll put it on in this bin. Okay. And then Joanne will be turning it, and uh, the things that still need to be cooked some will be brought over to the middle bin. Okay. And now I'll start collecting more coffee grounds yeah. and vegetable scraps. Those are great things to add, <laughs> yes. yeah. Okay. And so you're going to add some to this bin now? Yes, I'll, I'll go ahead and start turning it.
Well, thanks for joining us today. I hope you learned a lot about composting. I want to thank Pat and Mary Lou and Joanne for showing us their backyard garden and their composting bins. If you have any questions about how to start a composting bin in your backyard, um, contact your local extension office. Um, so thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time.